Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm recording this on my M1 Apple Silicon Mac and I'm going to be showing you how to install Windows 11 ARM, that's the ARM64 version of this operating system, onto the M1 Apple Silicon Mac via Parallels. So it's going to be a virtualized operating system. And this is the version of Windows 11 ARM that has just been released on the Insider Preview. This is going to be quite different from the x86 64-bit build which was leaked and which I made a video about last week. The performance of this build is going to be far superior because we are running a virtualized ARM operating system on an ARM chip, whereas in the previous video we were using QEMU to do an emulation through UTM and it was much, much slower. This build is going to have performance that's very close to the Windows 10 ARM that I've been testing throughout the last few months and much closer to what native ARM performance might be like. Also, I'd like to thank Martin Noble for giving me some technical support and giving me the instructions for making this all work. He's done his own demonstration of Windows 11 ARM on his M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Please check out the link in the description. So the very first thing you should check is that if you were a Windows Insider before the 24th of June, according to this Parallels forum thread, then you'll be automatically enrolled and be allowed to install Windows 11 directly from your Windows 10 ARM installation. So if you are an insider and you're logged in, then all you have to do is go to the Windows Update section in Settings and then press the Update button. However, if you were not enrolled, then you'll have to follow the next manual step. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is to build our own version of the ARM operating system using UUP Dump. So I'm gonna leave a link to this website in the description. We need to use a Windows PC for this. this is because the UUP dump builds a batch file and we need to execute that batch file which downloads files directly from the Microsoft servers. So you need a Windows PC or actually you could probably use Parallels to do it. I use my PC but let me know if Parallels works for you. All we have to do is to click on the latest ARM64 build. So I'm selecting this one here, which is the ARM64, not the AMD64 build. So I'll just click on the actual link and then I'm gonna select the language, which is just English and click next then click next again. So then we're gonna select the download and convert to ISO, which is the default option. And then all we need to do is to click create download package. And that's going to download a zip file, which contains everything that we need. So next step is to copy those files out of the zip file and put it in a folder. And then we're going to run the UUP download windows command. And what that's gonna do is to automate the download process. And once all the files are downloaded, it will automatically create the ISA for you. So we just wait a little bit of time and then that will be complete. So we're also going to need a copy of the Windows 10 ARM build as well. So we're actually going to do the same process and I'm gonna download the 21390 build. So I think we can use any Windows 10 build, but this is the particular one I'm using. All I've done is done a search for it and I'm creating this download package and doing the same process where I'm opening that command again. I wanna download a second Windows 10 ARM ISO. So the next step is going to require Parallels. So Parallels is definitely the best virtualization software that you can get on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and is the most powerful way to run Windows 11 or Windows 10 ARM on this machine. And right now they are having a 25% off sale. There's only three days left. So please check it out. You can also take advantage of the 14 day free trial. And if you do decide to buy it, please make sure to use the link in the description, which will definitely help me out a lot. So the next step is going to require Windows 10 already installed on Parallels. So if you haven't already done this, please follow the link in the description for my previous video tutorial. The main reason we're doing this is because we haven't been supplied with a proper VHDX file, so we're going to use the Windows 10 one and do an inline upgrade of Windows 10 to Windows 11. The only reason I've got two virtual machines here is because I'm recording this part retrospectively and I've cloned my Windows 10 virtual machine into the Windows 11 one so that I can do some testing. So the next stage, I'm going to copy and paste the two ISO files that I created, the Windows 10 and the Windows 11 one, into the Windows 10 virtual machine in Parallels. Now I'm copying from the Mac host into the Windows guest, but you could have easily created this within Parallels already. Just make sure to put the two ISOs somewhere on your desktop. So the main reason that we're actually downloading the Windows 10 ARM ISO is because we need it to bypass the TPM requirements of Windows 11 ARM. This is similar to the method that people have been using to install the leaked Windows 11 build and bypassing the TPM requirements there as well. So the first thing I've done is open up the 21390 Windows 10 build. And what I'm gonna do is create a new folder to store all of these files. So I'm gonna copy and paste the 21390 build into this Windows 11 ARM installer folder. Once all the files have copied over, I'm gonna open the 22000 build, which is the Windows 11 build. And then I'm going to open the sources folder in both windows. 
and then I'm going to copy and overwrite three different files. So the first file is install.wim. So this is kind of the main installer folder. So what this will do is trick the Windows 10 installer into installing Windows 11 files instead of Windows 10 files. And we're also going to copy the boot.wim. And I also copied the winsetter boot.sys file. So apparently this is not actually necessary, but my version of Windows 11 would not install without the Windows 11 version of this file. So now that all the files are now in place, we can just go and double click on the setup folder and basically just say yes to every single step. We should install the pro version of the software because if you have the home version, then you're going to be required to sign into a Microsoft account, whereas the pro version does not currently require a Microsoft account yet. So I'm just going to let this part speed up a little bit so we can skip through this faster. But I just wanted to leave it in here because it's an indication of how long it's going to take. And also some of the new animation screens are quite cool. So we're finally getting into the Windows 11 desktop. Now just be aware that this particular video that I'm showing you is the 0.1 version of the operating system. I'm going to show you how to upgrade to the 0.51. So what you'll find is that if you try to update Windows, it won't let you. But all you need to do is sign into your Windows Insider Program account. And once you're logged in, you'll actually be able to do the next update and it'll just restart and then work as normal. So anyway, I do quite like the look of Windows 11. Some of the interface options are quite cool. So I do like the fact that you can switch around the windows. I do like the idea of being able to plug in an external monitor and all of the windows reappearing as they should and group together properly. I do also like the centered dock, which is a bit Mac-like as I've mentioned in the past. I do like how it looks and feels. It's still a question about how it's going to perform. So I'm definitely going to do some tests and see how this affects gaming and things like that. So one of the game benchmarks I have been able to run on both the Windows 10 ARM and Windows 11 ARM virtual machines is Hitman. Man Absolution. Now this is a rather old game now but it's been running at 1600 by 900 and it's a good benchmark because it has a benchmark tool that gives us an average frame rate and as you can see these two benchmarks are run at the same time and they're showing pretty much exactly the same frame rate so in terms of actual gaming performance I don't really see much improvement or change to be honest and this just further shows that Windows 11 is very very similar to Windows 10 even when it comes down to fairly demanding benchmarks. So you'll be able to see at the end of this particular gameplay loop, you'll see a average frame rate and it's not particularly different either way. So we don't really expect any huge improvements in the virtualization or graphics performance. However, most of the changes are gonna be in the graphical interface. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I'm going to be covering more Windows 11 on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac in the future. So if you'd like to see more, please like and please subscribe. If you made use of this tutorial, please leave a comment. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.